Kathleen Lambert and today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to take your own watercolor painting and make a um, Valentine's Day card like this. So I'll show you what I have up here. Um, so I, you can see over um, on the right that at the bottom it is my watercolor painting and now it is uh, a card that I made um, with my watercolors um, and Adobe Illustrator. All right, so first of all, what I would do is I would paint my painting and I have it laid out on a, um, on the, on a big piece of paper like this because I wanted to uh, just see how the colors flow. And I tape it down um, so that it's flat. Then I take a picture with my phone. So after you do your design, and you're welcome to do this design if you like, and this saying, um, then um, I take a picture with my phone. It's important that you have the phone as flat as possible and um, there's uh, no shadows on the phone. So for example, um, I'm going to uh, bring this back on again and see this is the original picture that I took. And what I did with this is um, in photos, now that it's in photos, I went up to edit and I, um, I press this auto button because I like to see what the um, magic wand will do to it. And then I am going to go to crop and I'm going to crop it like that. Um, let's see if I want to make it straighter. Do I like it? I like it like that. I'll pull this in like that. I want to get as much other color out of the way as possible. Um, I'm going to center it. Um, this looks pretty good because you see I don't have shadows. But if I did have shadows, um, I would go to this exposure button and if I overexpose it you can see that it will take out the color but it also takes out the background. So play with these to get them as easy as possible for you to um, to have the color, the look that you want with the um, brightest colors and the lightest background. If you don't want to have any noise in the background if you don't like that. One thing I play with a lot is black point um, right here because that'll make things nice and sharp. You see how it's making it sharp when I do this um, and that will give us nice edges to then uh, bring into Illustrator and vectorize. So let's say I chose this one. I like the way this has uh, shown the different gradations of the watercolor painting. It may not be the, the color I want. We can change that if we want, but we're not going to in this video. Um, but I think that that makes a really nice picture. So I'm going to press done. And then I'm going to go into Illustrator. You can see that this is the finished product. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new one here. Um, your letter is the size that I want because these are, um, there's two of these that print on a piece of paper um, that is eight and a half by 11. So I want my measurements of my artboard to be eight and a half by 11, which happens to be one of the presets on Adobe Illustrator. So we'll just open that up. Uh, then I'm going to go over here to place and I'm going to go to photos because it's right there in my photos. And let's see, I'm going to go with this one right here because it really has almost no background whatsoever. Then all we have to do is touch the vectorize button, which can be found at the bottom of the taskbar. 
um, on the very left. It can also uh, be found here under object on the right um, drop down or taskbar menu. At the very top is vectorize. Either one will do the same thing. If you use a desktop illustrator, this is a lot like image trace. You will see that after you vectorize it, you have other options to make it, um, you know, exactly the way you want. Uh, in this case, it came out exactly the way I want. So I'm going to go out of property. I'm going to close this panel by touching the second uh, icon down the right, which is the properties panel icon. To close that, I'm going to go back into object and it says expand vectorization. I'm going to expand um, so now these things can't be image traced again or play, uh, vectorized more. They're already vectorized. You can see because they have little blue lines all around everything. Down at the bottom taskbar, you'll notice uh, the, um, the third icon from the right is um, an icon that uh, has, is, it means there's a line through it, which means that it's grouped. I'm going to ungroup everything because what I want to do is um, I'm going to take this white part in the back and I'm going to delete it. That way I can see now when I touch around here, there's, there's nothing that's vectorized there. That whole thing got deleted. That way I can do like grab all this and I'm going to group it so then I can move this all in one piece rather than moving one piece at a time. Same with this. I'm going to group it. And you see I, I lost a leg here, a bit of the leg. I'm going to go back and undo and drag over it again to group it. Move it up here. Um, in this case, because this is not grouped yet, um, I'm going to clean up the this letter E I don't like the the pink around there I think it looks messy and it's harder to read the letter E as messy as it is like that but that's all I'm gonna do you can do more if you want to to clean up your letters um, this I don't think is centered the way I want so I'm going to group each word will you if you know me, you, you know I love plays on words and puns and things. Um, and so that's why I did this, you being the play on words. Okay, so um, now uh, let's see here. I'm going to kind of play around with these things to make sure that they're the, the same height that I want them to be. I'm going to take this U and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And um, I'll maybe move that over a little bit. For those of you who are graphic artists, you may find that uh, you have a different look. You can do more to it than this, but um, real quickly, I'm going to now group all of that so that I can move it all together at one point. I know, like I said, that my artboard is eight and a half by 11 inches. So um, what, I all right, I'm gonna take my uh, pencil tool and um, I'm just gonna make a line right there. And then I'm going to select it. I want to center this. I'm going to duplicate it and turn it like that so it's 90 degrees. Then I know it's centered. I'm going to lock this and I'm going to lock this. So those two things are acting like a guide for me because I want to have my, my design just in the top right and the bottom right quadrants to make my card. So... Um, I'm going to just minimize this, make it smaller like that, make sure it is pretty well centered, just eyeballing it inside my card. Um, 
So there you go. Then I can just duplicate this. If I press the tool down on the um, bottom there, it will automatically line it up exactly in the same space. That looks about right. Um, then I can unlock this and delete it. Unlock this and delete it. And that should be pretty good. Actually, I think this might be a little too low. Um, okay, so there you go. This is all set to go to print on an eight and a half by 11 piece. If you have uh, pre-cut cards like I do, um, then this will print twice. And in order to print it, first of all, I like to go up to the uh, gear shift and name this. And I'm going to name it. Um, you cards. Okay. So I know what it is. Um, I am going to press the send button, um, which is to export or publish. And I am going to go over to, uh, export as to make sure that I've got things the way I want. I like it in a JPEG. I think it prints out nicer in a JPEG and I want it to be high quality and high resolution. So all I'm doing now is pressing export and then print. And you want to make sure that it fits on the page. Um, letter size. It looks like it might be over to the side a little bit too far, um, judging by this. So um, I would go back, just cancel this. To me, I think it's going to be okay, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to nudge it all over a little bit there. Okay. Um, hope that's okay. Maybe I went a little too far. There we go. Okay. I think that'll be fine. Um, okay. So again, we're going to go to publish and export. I'm going to export as you can choose something else, but I like the JPEG. I just think it comes out nice. Uh, export and print. Make sure that your settings are to paper size. Um, you can, I don't know how your printer will work, but this is how it'll work for me. It gives me a little preview window and you see that it is all going to fit on the page now. Um, and so then all you do is print. Okay, so here you have it. Um, the same thing that I printed before and um, I, uh, this was done on an eight and a half by 11 piece. This cuts it or, you know, breaks in half really nicely along the perforation here. And then I just fold it one more time. It's got a nice scoring on the inside fold. And there you have the card. Uh, just like we showed before. Here. So that's how you make a Valentine's Day card from um, your painting that you take into Illustrator on the iPad and now you have an adorable Valentine's Day card. If you would like to learn more, follow me at Kathleen Lambert Art on Facebook and Kathleen Lambert Art on Instagram. Happy Valentine's Day.